Hello and welcome. My name is Ilda and I'm a partner in the Immigration Department at Kingsley Napoli. Thank you very much for joining us today. Today we will be talking to you about the issue after the transition period ends on the 1st of January 2021 and what that means if you have British lawyers flying into Europe in order to give advice to your clients based there. Now there are 27 countries in the European Union every country within the European Union have their own immigration rules. So it will mean that if you have British lawyers flying out and then flying back into the UK uh, in order to give advice to clients based in Europe, that they will need to comply and be aware of what the immigration rules are for the particular country they are traveling to. Equally, one would have to be aware of if there are any kind of regulatory requirements, even though you are not going to be giving advice based on the European country that the lawyer is travelling to. To that end, I'm delighted to say that I have with me today two colleagues, Ian Miller, a partner in our regulatory department, who will be covering some issues that um, we think you should be aware of from a regulatory perspective. I'm also delighted to say that I have with me today Anna Garicano from Sagadoy Avogados, a well-renowned uh, law firm in Spain specializing in Spanish immigration law. Uh, Anna herself has many, many years of experience. She's a partner with the firm and is here with us today to talk about a couple of issues that we think, again, you as law firms should be aware of when sending British lawyers into Spain on a fly-in, fly-out basis. To that end, the first questions that I've turned to will be to Ian in respect of the regulatory regime and what you as law firms should be aware of. Thank you, Ilda. Um, from the regulatory perspective, um, if there's no trade deal um, after the 31st of December 2020, then UK lawyers will lose um, the, the free movement of, um, that they enjoyed um, as members of the EU to provide services in any other EU state. Um, so how does that affect the regulatory position in relation to Spain? Well, there's no foreign legal consultant status in Spain. However, the provision of home country law, such as UK or England and Wales law, and indeed international law, advised by third party or third country lawyers in Spain is permitted. It follows that lawyers can continue to do that. The question is, are there any conditions or restrictions attached to um, this permitted practice? Um, while it is mandatory for EU, EU lawyers to advise the local bar in Spain um, when they will be temporarily providing legal services on a fly-in, fly-out basis, there's no mention in the law regarding non-EU lawyers. The Spanish bar does, however, recommend that the local bar be informed, so that is probably the best approach to adopt. Um, clearly, it's not possible to use the domestic Spanish description of obligados because that does not that um, does not enable people to apply in court, uh, 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 appear in court. Um, but foreign lawyers can continue to represent their clients in arbitrations, conciliations, and mediations in Spain on a fly-in, fly-out basis. The final question is whether um, legal professional privilege will apply. The short answer is yes. All lawyers are subject to duties of confidentiality and secrecy, and in the same way, documents and communications exchanged between lawyers and clients are protected as well. That's set out in Spain's Code of Ethics. There are, however, currently no specific rules to confirm whether legal professional privilege applies to third party countries' lawyers' correspondence. Thank you, Anna. Um, as a uh, solicitor or a lawyer span uh, practicing Spanish immigration law, do you have any top tips for UK law firms that need to send UK lawyers into Spain after the transition period ends? Well, uh, Ilda, first of all, thank you very much for your introduction and for counting on Sagardo y Abogados uh, for this very interesting project. Well, the key tip uh, here will be uh, to all the UK law firms to keep in mind that uh, third country nationals uh, out of the EU legal framework uh, in order to work in Spain uh, will need a 
permit, a work permit prior starting the work activity in the country. And what is very important is that the need of this permit is irrespective of where the employer is located and the length of the stay in Spain. The key point is the nature of the activity to be conducted in the country. So if the lawyers are going to conduct work, even for one day, they will need a, a permit. Well, here the, the issue is to know what is considered as a work uh, instead of business activities permitted and under the, the visitor stages and I, I'm sorry but we do not have a clear answer because when it is about intellectual work the Spanish legislation does not make any difference. What our immigration legal uh, framework states is that uh, meetings, commercial meetings and professional meetings can be conducted under the visitor a status. So I'm afraid that the law firms will need to determine on a case-by-case -case, uh, basis if a work permit uh, would be required to conduct the activity of the lawyer in, in our country. Thank you. Also, it's not strictly ILDA and immigration matter, it's more about uh, the pandemic, but what uh, the lawyers need to know uh, from um, January 1st is that the European uh, Union uh, has limited the non-essential trips from third countries to the EU countries due to the pandemic. So uh, the lawyers will need to make sure if traveling from the UK, they will be admitted, not because immigra for immigration reasons, because for sanitary regulations. From our perspective, there is an exception to this ban from entry that might be applicable to the UK lawyers, and this is that they might be considered as highly qualified workers who are going to conduct activities in Spain that cannot be conducted on remote. So if a lawyer needs to travel, what the firm shall do is to contact the Spanish consulate to confirm, not from an immigration perspective, but from uh, these health uh, limits, if they will be authorized to enter in Spain or not. Interesting, thank you. And Anna, any idea how long that will take to get the authority, assuming you get it? Yeah, well, uh, from our uh, experience, uh, the consulates, uh, from the moment they receive the, the request, they contact the Spanish control borders authorities, and in one week, the Spanish control border authority gets back to the, to the consulate. It's not kind of an official document what they are going to receive, perhaps just a paper or, a, or an email. This depends on the consulate. And some other visitors are admitted without this previous authorization, but it's highly advisable to double check if the ban from entry applies to the third country nationals traveling from third countries as it will be the case of the UK and British lawyers from January. Thank you, thank you, that's really important. So Anna, assuming that um, the, the, the lawyer does get the approval and the exemption and they're able to travel to Spain from the 1st of January next year, presumably if it's just a visit, they're going to see a client um, and, and, and basically not give any form of advice, how much time will they be able to spend in Spain? Okay, great. Just to visit a client, what I would like to clarify is that this will be considered as a meeting, so it can be conducted under a visitor status. So Schengen rules will apply and the lawyer is going to be in, can be in Spain a maximum of 90 days, continuous or discontinuous, within any 180 day period. Thank you, thank you. And is it a case of that um, you, the, the, the British citizen will get a visitor visa on arrival or how will that work in practice? 
No, in practice, uh, we all assume that the British nationals are going to be under the visitor visa waiver program. So a uh, visa will not be requested to travel to Spain, but in the control border, if, they if the authorities request so, they will need to explain and to prove why they are coming, where they are going to stay, that they are not going to work, that they are here just as visitors. Thank you. Um, so I suppose, Anna, you, you touched on this before when I asked you about the top tips, but uh, presumably if the British lawyer flying in uh, to see a client is going to do something more than just a business meeting, so they're going to uh, draft documents uh, that might be involved in some sort of pleadings um, or, or some sort of case that they need to present um, to a, a client, a contract or so, um, that that would require work permission even though it's just for a few days that they intend to spend in Spain? Yes, I'm afraid yes and the right permit will be the ICT permit. This is a permit allowing to work in Spain maintaining employment contract in the sending country, in this case it will be the UK and the, the lawyer in this case will be coming to a Spanish client on the basis of a service agreement between the law firm and the Spanish client. And this permit can be approved from one day up to uh, two years. The processing time is not too long, it's uh, 20 working days for the work permit and 10 days, 10 working days for the visa. And the visa step process can be avoided if the lawyer is in Spain when the work permit application is submitted. However, the lawyer will not be authorized to start working in Spain, but just to conduct meetings until the permit is approved. Thank you very much. That is really, really helpful. Thank you, Anna, and thank you, Ian. We've now come to the end of our session. Thank you very much for listening. We hope you found it helpful. Uh, and please be on the lookout for the next of our podcasts for other countries uh, where lawyers are flying into. Thank you.